Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to get started with a new uh, tool for coding called Trinket. Trinket allows you to code in a language called Python, and uh, it stores everything in the cloud, which is kind of cool. So you're going to go to trinket.io, and you can just type www.trinket.io, and it'll take you here, and then you're going to sign up for a free account if you have permission, and I'll let you know who does. Um, sign up for your free account, and you just log in with your Google account, your school Google account, and then it uses the same password and everything else. Once you are logged in, then um, I'm going to have you do this. I'm going to have you say, I need a new trinket in Python 3. I'm going to create a new trinket in Python 3, and we're going to do some fun stuff with this, or at least I think it's fun. All right, so this is where you write your program in this area over here, and over here is where your program will run. So let's write our very first program, which is just print, and I put it in quotes, hello world, okay? And now if I hit run, I can see that the program runs over here, and it will say hello world, unless it doesn't. There it is. I, had to, I just had to go to the new line. So, hello world. Um, and I'm now going to skip a line. doesn't matter if you do or you don't, but when you're programming, you can skip lines. I'm going to say print, um, I am a computer. So, hello world, I am a computer. Notice that there is no space between hello world and I am a computer, even though I put a space here. Um, so, printing is one of the key things that you can do with Python, of course, and printing information is really great. You can also create variables. Um, variables are places that you store information like numbers. And let's do a simple example of that. So I'm going to create a variable called a equals zero, and then I'm going to say print a. Notice that I don't put quotes around the a, because I don't want it to print the letter a, I want it to print the value of a. So if I hit run now, it should say, hello world, I am a computer, and zero. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of math. Um, B equals 6. And if I say um, print A plus B, it will actually answer that question, hopefully. Oh, well, yeah, 6 plus 0 is 6, so let's change this number to 4. I'm pretty sure this is 10. Don't teach math, but 6 plus 4. Yep, it's 10. So, hello world, I'm a computer. Then you print 4, then you print 10. Okay. And there are a lot of other cool commands you can do um, with, uh, with Python. I'm going to show you one of them right here, just so you get a taste of something you can do kind of quickly. So I'm going to say um, a equals 0 again. And now I'm going to do this. While a is less than 100, and I'm going to put a colon at the end of this, and that colon means everything after this while statement happens while a is less than 100. So I'm going to say print A, and then I'm going to say A equals A plus 1. So let's go ahead and run this. What do you think this is going to do? While A is less than 100, print A, and then make A go up by 1. <clears throat> and it printed up through 99. It did not print 100, because as soon as it got to 100, it said while A is less than 100, so it didn't print it. If I actually said less, I wonder if this works, less than or equal to 100, I think it might go to 100. Yep, less than or equal to goes, uh, prints all the way to 100. <clears throat> now, first question for you is, could you change this program to make it count by twos or threes? How would you do that? Give you a second to think about it. Yep, you probably realize that if you change this to two, this is going to count by twos now. Run. Notice that it's only printing the even numbers, and it obviously printed far fewer of them because it skipped every other number. Or if I count by tens, I could do this all day. Okay, excellent. So, so far I've got a uh, computer that can do some pretty simple math things and print some things. Also be nice if it could... Um... Oh, notice that when I hit return from here, it stayed indented because it's expecting more things in the while. But if I 
just go like this, which is I'm going to hit delete, and go back to the same line as here. The while is over. So the while is just this stuff. And what's cool is when you write long programs, you can actually hide stuff so that you don't take up too much space. Um, but uh, the, the while is there, and now I'm doing something else. So a new, another command I'm going to tell you about is called input. And here's how it works. Um, I'm going to say name equals empty quotes. This is a string. I've created a variable called a string. And a string just means a series of characters. And right now, name has no value. It's empty. Often when you start a new variable, it makes sense to start it at a default number like 0, or in the case of strings, empty value. Now I want to assign name something. So I'm going to say name equals snowy snowflake. Okay. And now I'm going to print something else, which is print hello plus name. What's going to happen here? Okay. Run. Hello, snowy snowflake. Notice there's no space after the hello. So I need to put a space right here. Now I could actually also do it with commas. Doesn't matter if you use commas or plus. It'll do the same thing. Oh, I take that back. It did not do the same thing. It entered an extra space when I put in the comma. So it puts a space automatically. If you put in a comma, it puts a space automatically for you. OK, so that's kind of useful if your name is always Snowy Snowflake. But it probably might be better to actually show you what an input does. So you can say name equals input. And then you put in quotes what you want to ask. What is your name? OK. Then on the next line, I could say print hello name. Oops. Notice that I did not put, notice how here it's purple, because it's a function that, that Python understands, red, and then black. Black is a, a variable or something like that. And so here it's all red. Why is it all red? Because there's no quote at the end of hello. As soon as I put in that quote, name turns black, and we're good to go. So print hello name, and let's see what happens. Ah, it's telling me there's an error. OK, name equals, oh, so do you remember how I told you that you have to separate the items with commas? So see how it says hello, close quote, comma, name? Well, it's telling me there's an error in line 23. And here's the error. And somewhere, it's just syntax error. It doesn't understand something about this line. And what I can tell is that I put the comma in the wrong place. The comma has to be outside the quotes. What is your name? Uh, my name is, um, I don't know, Ronald McDonald. Hello, Ronald McDonald. OK, how cool is that? All right, now let's see if we can write any other interesting programs or parts to our program. We could say, um, uh, hmm. actually, let's just stop there for now. So what have we learned? We've learned how to print strings and print numbers. We learned how to do a while counting thing. OK, that's kind of cool. And uh, we've learned how to uh, put two things together into a string and get an input to give a value. All right, that's a pretty cool little program.